Now I'd like to invite some of the heroes, really, law enforcement professionals here to speak, say, for just a few minutes, the Biden border bloodbath. They want to talk about it, and we will talk about it. Our country is in trouble. We're a nation in decline. We're not going to let it happen. We've got to stop it. We've got to win on November 5th, and it's all going to stop, and it's going to stop very quickly. Thank you very much. If I could, I'll ask Police Officers Association of Michigan, President James, Tiganelli to come up. He's a fantastic man, respected all over the country. Thank you. James, please. What an honor to be here and with all these leaders of law enforcement and Congress uh, but with you here. Thank you. Waiting for the next trip up to uh, D.C. with you. The, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about, about recruiting, retention, and what the life of the police are like right now that we know that you were going to fix for us because you did the last time just because of how you feel about us. 45 years ago, 45, yeah. number sounds to me, right? <laughs> 45 years ago, uh, when I hired on at the job, 2,000 people would apply for 200 positions. Right. It, because this job of sh deputy sheriff and police officer was a very honorable job. The guy down the street, you all knew where they lived. You all looked for them for leadership. And nowadays, and let's say the last 10 years, we can't get enough people to fill the vacancies. The academies are empty. Nobody's coming along. And we can't get enough candidates. So why does that happen? It's, it's not because there's no desire. It's because of recruiting. Right. And recruiting, to me, was always the uh, uh, grandpa, Uncle Joe, who was a police officer. Maybe it was the baseball coach that was a cop during the week. He was the guy that you respected. I didn't come from a law enforcement family, but I came up as a law enforcement officer because they were important to me. On the east side of Detroit, you needed to have a few friends in a PD. The uh, 48205, this is now the most violent zip code in America, I believe. That's where I was at. But there's no way we can have a president of the United States that allows 3 million people a year or more, I'm sure, to come across the, uh, to come out of our country illegally. We can't allow that to continue. It's, uh, those who enter, they do so in the light of day. They do it by pushing aside our National Guard. Then they're handed a, a, you know, a gift card, they're handed a telephone or an iPad, transportation to anywhere in the U.S. that they want to go. And then you want to tell these law-abiding people that are here, uh, you have to obey the law. There seems like there's no real reason to do that anymore. And that's made it very hard to be policing because people look to us, the, the law-abiding people look to us, but they're saying, what about that person? What about that? You've, as you've talked about here today, it, my mom used to say it takes the wind out of your sails. You just kind of, everything calms down and it's not so good. The felons that we arrest become misdemeanors and then they become no bond. And then they become free guys really before we get our car cleaned out at the end of the shift. Why would you expect people to obey the law when millions are rewarded for disobeying it? I don't know how many officers must get injured or killed or, or worse, the, the, the civilians out there that are injured or assaulted or killed and, and assaulted. We've heard about a couple of them here tonight. I know that we can fill these vacant jobs with good people. I know they're out there. I know we can recruit them, but we need a commander in chief that will give them just simple due process. You've talked about some of the things that are important to us, but they just need, they just need to know they've got somebody behind them a little bit instead of trying to push them backwards, pushing them forward. I think that'll help to restore the honor to this job that, that was once such an honorable one. I can promise you that our guys will put that suit on and go out and do the job for you. They really will, and they'll be better for all of the people in this room when that happens. We always were what stood between uh, law-abiding citizens and chaos. You hear about it all night. You've talked about it here today. Uh, instead of those efforts to make the United States look weak and, and uh, poor and uh, average, we need you. We need you to make America look great again. And, uh, and I, know you, I know you have that. I know it's there. Uh, last week when you went to New York and you attended the viewing of Jonathan Doerr, uh, I just wanted you to know that that brought honor to every police officer, every deputy sheriff, every law enforcement officer, wherever we were in this country, when we saw what you did, it was like, that's cool. That's us. That's, that's a boost for all of us. It was so, it's so good. Uh, I hope that you'll consider with the Congress and the Senate here that we have that uh, you'll support legislation to make a, 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 a death penalty for killing a police officer while on duty. And 
I'll leave you with this. Uh, we supported you. We endorsed you in 2016. We were the first guys in Michigan. And you, you sent me a little video, and we still have it. it was, uh, we were proud to, proud to do it. We were there in 2020. And I'll tell you, we're here in 2024. And today, on behalf of 12,000 law enforcement people that the Police Officers Association of Michigan represent, we want you to accept our endorsement for President of the United States. Very important. We got it. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you very much. That's very nice. That's a great honor, and thank you very much. And uh, we will we will make you proud. We will make you proud. I do want to thank uh, the family of because I met with Stephanie. That's Jonathan's beautiful wife, Jonathan Diller, and. Uh, I met with the whole family. These are incredible people. What happened to Jonathan should never have happened. And uh, they were just uh, devastated. But the spirit and the love and the numbers of police that were there and fire, the firemen, fire women, uh, the number of people that were there was incredible. It just was incredible. But that's an incredible family. So we send our love. Uh, I said to Stephanie, he will not have died in vain. So, but I thank you very much for the endorsement. Thank you. So, uh, if I might, we're going to do this very quickly. Uh, Sheriff Daniel Abbott, as you know, uh, Van Buren County, highly respected, and he's going to say a few words. Thank you, Daniel. So I'll make this pretty brief. I was asked to hit on how the open borders are affecting us here in southwestern Michigan. Um, our county is actually on the southwestern part of Michigan, only Berrien's below us. I ran some numbers yesterday in our jail facility. 40% of our inmates in our jail in Van Buren County have out-of-county residency. Out of the 40% that do not live in our county that we're feeding every day, 10% of those have addresses from Mexico or Guatemala. Put that in perspective. We're, we are a rural community. 10% of the folks in our jail are from Mexico or Guatemala. They're not in our jail by coincidence. We didn't just see them walking down the road and saying, you know what, I don't think you belong here. They're in our jail because they committed crimes. If you look at the heinous crimes that they committed, the one that really jumped out at us is all the violent sex crimes. And it's not just against adults. It's against our children as well in our community, and that's appalling. To go even further on that, with the open borders the way they are, when President Trump was in office, our narcotic unit was buying a ball of meth, which is 3.5 ounces of meth for $300 to $350 for a ball. As of this past week, a ball is $85 because the market's flooded by the tons coming across the open borders and semis. And when I say tons, I mean tons. It used to be a thing of the past, or it is a thing of the past, folks doing um making the meth in their, in their own residences. They don't do it anymore because the cartel's bringing it in by the tons. They're not having to make it inside their residences. Hence, the cheap amount that's going out and, and the amount that's on the street, it's disturbing. I've got a few bullet points I want to really drive home to you folks. Um, career law enforcement officers have faced incredible challenges these past four years for several reasons. The drastic rise in fentanyl as well coming over the borders touched just about every family in southwestern Michigan. You guys all see it on the news on a regular basis, all the ODs and uh, domestic situations that we handle in law enforcement. We handle roughly two overdose deaths a week in our county. Keep in mind, our county is only 76,000 population. So at least twice a week, we're handling those. And those are numbers I ran yesterday. I just didn't make those numbers up. That's disturbing. It's getting in our schools. It's getting in our children's hands. It's very disturbing. It's killing our kids. It's poisoning our communities. It's making the jobs of law enforcement professionals much more difficult. The open southern border is the heart of lawlessness and crime you're witnessing. No, make no bones about it. We need leadership at the national level that is willing to solve this crisis. President Trump, without a doubt, is the leader we need to get the job done and get America safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Allegan County Sheriff Frank Baker to say a few words, please. Frank. 
Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Mr. President. It's truly an honor to be here today and talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart, as well as my fellow sheriffs, and that's safety within our communities. And one of the biggest things that we're facing now, and Sheriff Abbott mentioned it, is um, the, the crime, the level of crime we're seeing, but uh, the, the amount of narcotics, the illegal narcotics, whether it's methamphetamine or fentanyl, it's devastating our communities. And something needs to be done about that. And the only way we can do anything is to secure the border. A lot of times people ask me, you know, the border's a long way from Allegan County. And yes, it is. But there's not a day goes by that's not impacting what happens in our county because of the amount of drugs that we're seeing. We used to be known as the meth capital of the world, jokingly people would say, because of the number of methamphetamine labs that we'd made arrests for. We don't make arrests for methamphetamine labs anymore. I mean, it's, it's a thing of the past because... The illegal drugs that are, we're seeing now, the crystal methamphetamine, is so cheap, as Sheriff Abbott had mentioned, it's cheaper to buy it than it is to make it. So uh, we, we have a crisis on our hands, and we need help. And uh, part of that help is going to be securing our borders. So I appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today to talk about this, this important topic to us. Because there are a lot of tragedies that are happening, and you mentioned it with Ruby Garcia. In fact, a couple of our deputies uh, made the arrest of the suspect in that case last month. So uh, it's happening in our, in our neighborhoods, even though the border is a long ways away, and we need help. And so I appreciate what you're doing to help us and meeting with us today to talk about this concern. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Great, great people behind me. Is Tom Holman here by any chance? Tom? Tom Holman? Where's Tom Holman? Because I wanted to pay tribute to him. He is some man. And uh, I know he was around here. I said hello. I said, I might bring you up, but I'm not going to bring him up because he's not here. <laughs> he had to get back to capture people. But I just want to thank Tom Holman. He has been so special. He's been so great on television. He's been so respectful of the job that we did as an administration. We had such great numbers, and we took over a tough situation, and we had great numbers. You know, in 2016, I ran on the border, and uh, in 2020, we did such a good job. I couldn't even talk about the border. The people would say, sir, they don't want to hear about the border. I said, no, no, we did a great job. We have to talk about it. Sir, they don't care. You fix the border. The border's great. You see the numbers up there. The border's great. Uh, nobody cares about the border. And now we have today. Today, the border is a hundred times worse than it ever was in 2016. That was, I call it peanuts. That was peanuts. That was small time. And uh, today, it's the worst border anywhere, I think, in the world. There's never been a border like this anywhere in the world where millions and millions of people are coming. Thousands of people come over an hour. And uh, there's never been anything like it. We're going to fix it. We're going to close it. And we're going to do many other things that we're not here to talk about, but we're going to make our country great again. We're going to — we are not now a great country. We are a country that is in serious decline. And we're not going to let that happen to our country. We're going to fix the economy. We're going to get inflation under control. Inflation's up probably — real numbers, 50 percent in the last few years. And people are being destroyed just going to the grocery store. That's why I hear it the most. They go out for groceries. They can't believe it. They're paying four and five times more than they did two or three years ago. But we're going to fix our country. We're going to be respected again all over the world. I'm going to keep you out of World War III. We're not going to have World War III. Right now, the way we're going, you're going to have World War III. And we're going to do a real job. We gave you the largest tax cut in history, largest regulation cuts in history. We took care of our soldiers. We rebuilt our military. We beat ISIS, and we didn't go into any wars. Everyone said, remember when Hillary Clinton said, look at him. He's going to get us into wars. Oh, I got us out of wars. And uh, — but we knocked out ISIS, and we knocked out everything we had to do, and we rebuilt that military to a level. Unfortunately, he gave a lot of it away to Afghanistan. But uh, as much as it was, it was a small portion compared to what we did. We built a, we rebuilt our entire military, and I'm very proud of it. We have a great military. They're not woke, like people think. A couple of people on top are. They'd like to be, but we're not. Our military is amazing. What they did with ISIS it was supposed to take four years, and it took me a couple of months to knock out ISIS 100 percent. Do you remember I had it down to 97 percent? And the media started saying, sir, it's not 100 percent. I said, I've got problems. I better do it. So we took a few more weeks, and we got it down to 100 percent, and they admit it. And uh, it's just one of those things. But the people behind me are incredible people. They're heroes. They're heroes. And you have a couple that are going to be elected very soon, and they're going to do a real job. They're going to — they love Michigan. They love the country, and they're going to do a real job. It's an honor to be here. I'll be back a little bit before 
November 5th. I'll be back as many times, because this is a very important state. You win Michigan, you win the election. You win Michigan, you're going to win the election. And uh, so we'll be back, and we'll be back to Wisconsin. I'm heading for Wisconsin right now, and we're going to be back there quite a bit, too. We're going to we're going to put it all out, because if we don't win on November 5th, I think our country is going to cease to exist. It could be the last election we ever have. I actually mean that. We don't win. I think this could be the last election we ever have. That's where our country is going. So uh, I just want to thank you all. Thank you very much. And I just want to thank you all very much. It's an honor. I'll see you soon. And uh, again, give these people a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, do you support the six-week abortion ban that the Florida Supreme Court just upheld? We'll be making a statement next week on abortion. We're going to make a statement next week. What would you tell Prime Minister Netanyahu? USA! 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 Mr. President, what would you tell Prime Minister Netanyahu after the death of any worker?